Hello, and welcome back to another experimental soup. Uh, yes, it's been a while, but I'm finally back in the shed, and hopefully this year we're going to see a couple of bouts of experimental archaeology breaking out. Uh, really, this series is all about testing ideas, techniques, and even crafts from the past. And, uh, and actually, today's episode was inspired, funnily enough, by a question of doom. Now, sadly, the email has been lost to the ether. It got, it got deleted automatically somehow. But, uh, but it, it was a really interesting question, and one which I wasn't sure was, was actually particularly serious. You see, the person was asking whether or not um, a bearded axe like this is designed as such in order to use the space behind the blade uh, to sort of grab the axe and use it for sort of punching people in the face. The, the person sort of even, even said that they'd seen this done on, on movies and asked if, if this was true. <laughs> and I, I really wasn't sure if they were taking the mick or not. I've never seen it seen that done in a film. Um, but, uh, but we always try to live by the mantra that there's no such thing as a bad question. Here at Archeo Soup Towns, we encourage questions, and so I figured, why not, why not test it out? <laughs> and actually, this ended up being quite a lot of fun. So um, uh, whoever it was that sent in the question, thank you very much. So, first things first, the axe itself. It's called a bearded or skeg axe, or skeg ox. Uh, and that's because this shape here is reminiscent of a beard jutting out from someone's chin, like this. Uh, Skeg Ness, for example, in Lincolnshire, is named, uh, or was named by the Vikings, because they believed that uh, the, the land looked like uh, a beard jutting out into the ocean. Skeg being the Old Norse for beard. Beard, incidentally, actually, is also a Germanic word, but that's come through Old English. So beard and skeg mean the same thing. So a bearded axe. And uh, this bearded axe is an iconic and very useful tool. And the thing is, primarily it is a tool, uh, and we think that the reason why the beard is shaped like this is, is in order to get your hand behind it, but actually this is in order to use it for very precise manoeuvres in carpentry. Uh, the Vikings primarily relied on axes of different sizes for all their carpentry work, whether they were building ships, building houses, making shields, or you know, other barrels, this kind of thing. It was different types of axe. Chisels, uh, what we would refer to as chisels, weren't really a mainstay of the, the Viking tool set or the Norse tool set. And uh, it was really a, set, a, a case of using saws and axes. So the, the, the requirement for different sizes of axe, but also axes that could be held in different positions and tapped maybe with a hammer, um, was crucial. And so this is the primary reason for the beard element of the bearded axe. Now, <laughs> beyond the beard, the axe actually does have um, what many people would call an anatomy, and some people describe the axe using other body parts as well. For example, this top bit is an eye, because it looks a bit like an eye when someone you know, might be blinking or something. Uh, this bit here that I'm holding is the throat. Uh, this bit here is the belly of the axe. And when it's on its side, the axe actually uh, essentially has a, 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 becomes a foot. We have the heel of the axe and the toe of the axe over here. So some people use body parts to describe all different parts of the axe, uh, but the beard element is, is the iconic shape of the, of the, the, the bearded axe, the, the bit sticking out the bottom. So we think it was a carpentry tool initially. However, that doesn't mean that it wasn't used for war. Of course it was used for war. Not only were there no real standing armies in the time of the Vikings, for example, uh, usually farmers might be called up by Jarls if there was a battle, or perhaps there would be, um, if you're going on a raiding party, you would simply take the tools that you had with you. You're not always going to be a huskarl or a, a professional soldier, so you might be a farmer and you take your axe, or you might be a carpenter and you take your axe along with you. Also, incidentally as well, axes are really useful to use as hammers. You can, you can make fences out of them as well, or hammer in fence posts. So you might take this along with you, um, and some enterprising young soul one day spotted that actually the beard part of the axe is very useful for hooking shields away from people and opening up perhaps an enemy line to being you know to, to attack by your neighbour. If you're in a shield wall, you can hook their, sh their someone else's shield out of the way and help the person next to you maybe get a spear or a sword or a, a say axe like a knife or an axe actually in uh, in there. So and, and, and actually that, that was that was a, that was that was a perfectly legitimate use of the bearded axe. And you often see this this being used like this, for example, in movies uh, on TV. And also reenactors actually they love to demonstrate the bearded axe as a as a hooking uh, tool. 
So the bearded element of the axe is incredibly useful for carpentry, for pre precise manoeuvring, but also obviously when it comes to combat, very useful for hooking, especially shields, off other people. However, this is experimental soup, and we're here to perform an experiment. Let's compare what happens when you chop something with an axe to what happens when you punch something with an axe. So, I have my shield, an axe, and a melon. Let's see what a swing does. So let's take a look at what a swung bearded axe has done to the melon. Well, it chopped straight through. It made quite a mess. And uh, to be honest, an axe, when swung, as it's designed to be, will do this to a head as well. So this time I have my shield, an axe and a melon, and we're going to see what a punch does, if, if anything at all. So this time we know that there was some effect on the melon, but it wasn't as dramatic as when the axe was swung. I have to manoeuvre the melon a little bit to actually see the damage properly, and it certainly hasn't split it in two. It's just not as effective, and probably not a good choice in combat. <laughs> so there you have it. A wonderfully tasty, and I think fairly conclusive experiment. Axes are best for chopping. They do much more damage, and really that's what they're designed to do. They swing on the lever created by the length of the handle of the axe. The axe could be used for punching, but really the damage is not as, uh, as great. And especially if someone's moving their head around, and given the density of the human skull, you're less likely to actually achieve something, really, if you punch someone, as opposed to if you swing the axe. And really, let's face it, if you've got the axe in your hand, why wouldn't you swing it as opposed to punch? It's uh, it's an interesting question. It's been fun to test. But realistically, no. I'm a swinger, not a puncher. <laughs> and on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as ever, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.